All right, welcome to the Edetivo Sholem Shir. We're going to talk about uh, this week's Parsha, Korach, uh, and why Korach got in so much difficulty. Korach, as we know, rebelled against Moshe Rabbeinu. And he basically said, you know, what makes you so great? Why should you be leading this, this community of Israel? Um, I'm just as good as you. I want to do it. And what was his punishment? His, his punishment was so severe that a punishment like that never happened before. Uh, he and his followers were swallowed up alive into the ground and they were completely lost. And this, uh, this, the Tibo Chong is going to talk about what it was that Korach did uh, to earn him this distinction of being lost from his people, uh, a penalty that has never incurred by before. And what we can learn from that in terms of our own, our own service to God. So I have on the, the screen share, hopefully you can see the screen share, the Nativo Shalom, Agam Korach Inyan Hayishut. The defect of Korach was the narcissistic character of him, that he only thought about himself. He wasn't humble, he was just the opposite. He was so prideful that he thought he, he was it. So what does the Tivo Chong say? Likach Korach, and Korach took. Isa Bazar Kodesh, the Holy Zohar says, the Korach Azubim the Machlokot, sorry, that Korach was busy in, in fighting. Machlokos plucked in the Shalom. And this fight was a fight against peace. The Varinian Korach, the Polygon Shalom, to explain what he means by that, the Chisavar Shiesh Lachus Machlokos, to think that he was holding on to, to fighting. Yesh Lover Dine Shalom. There is, there is peace and there is a fight that is a fight on peace. The fight on peace, the inner aspect of it is uh, the aspect of pridefulness, uh, the opposite of being humble. Adam Shu Bimchinas Yesh. A person who is in the aspect of, I have. He's always looking for something for his own benefit. Nidmelo, it seems to him, somebody who's so swollen in his head. No matter what he's doing, he's thinking, oh, my friends are standing in my way. They're getting in my way. Even though his friends haven't done anything. Because of this, this quality of uh, egoism, egotistical quality, narcissistic quality. He has the feeling. He has the feeling that He's interfering with them and taking this place. And from this, he comes to, to have a, a fight. Shalom, peace, which is the opposite of fighting, comes from the quality of humility whereas a nullification of the ego. Kashir machnia 
as atzmo legamri la when you you put yourself totally, subject yourself totally to God. So when you you break, you break your humility. Pause then, ish enumafriolo. You're not going to see people are standing in your way and interfering with you. They don't only love darko, and they're not standing in your way. They're not blocking your way. Bahai in kulo b'shalom, and you will live with all of them in peace. Just think about that for a minute. The person who only thinks about himself, thinks that everything happens, revolves around him looks at anybody else as being in his way. I mean, you can see it as you're driving down the road when uh, you're gonna get there at the same time, but somebody's gotta pass you and give you a dirty look for going too slow uh, or, or even worse. Uh, uh, somebody's got his crowd in line, and you're standing in line, pushed you out of line, uh, pushed to get ahead of you. That is, that is an epitome, an example of what somebody who only thinks of themselves does. He goes on. Midas hayishus, he has shorish pora rosh la'ana shall call hamidas haras. This quality of egotism is the root of all evil qualities. Akina says in Pirkei Avos, Hakina, jealousy, vatava, and desire, improper desire, vakavod, the seeking of honor, hamotzi'in esa'adam min ha'olam, they take a person out of this world, shosham b'mida ha'yishus, all of the, the roots of these things, of jealousy, desire of the wrong things and this running after honor, the root of that is this feeling that I am all it, the feeling of ego. Kinovat me yishuts. Jealousy comes from narcissism. Because why should you have something? I should have it. I deserve it. You don't deserve it. But Tava Novat me yishuts. Similarly, a desire for something that isn't yours, a desire for something that is bad. That's just, that's that's comes from narcissism. I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to that. Why shouldn't I have it? Most important is the the search for honor, the quest for honor, uh, coming from uh, this egotistical quality. Uh, we see, unfortunately, uh, so many examples around us, uh, certainly in the political life uh, and other ways where everything is about honor to the people. It's their own self-honor, their own self-worth. Uh, that's, that's the key. And that's, as the Kiddo Shalom says, that flows, ex flows exactly from this concept of Egoism. Shikar Yishush misbatab inyan hagava. The the whole the, the main part of uh, being being egotistical is the definition of what uh, unwarranted pride is. pagam korach. And this was the pagam, this was the defect of Korach, the Midas Hagabos, in Kor Midas Hayishus, and the quality of, of pride, which is the the core, the foundation of uh, Yishus, speaking only of yourself. Balkain, and therefore Palig al Shalom, therefore he was fighting on peace. The Tivo Show was on to say, Shashorosh Machlokoso, Oyohamidas Bitu Hayishus Lubchidas Ein. The whole root of the fire was of, 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 the, of the fight, the whole root of the fight was on the 
the quality of uh, trying to defeat your ego and get to the reverse of ego, which is humility. Because the ego is just the opposite of that. I share Zoom and Shalom. I am feeling of nothingness. That's the that's the basis of peace. And for that reason, Korach fought Moshe. Should we do so because Moshe was the humblest of all persons. His quality was that of uh, total humility. Come on, the Kosum Boish Moshe Arumayor. It says Moshe was the most humble of people. You call Adam from all people. Asher al Pane Adama. And the whole world. He was most humble. Here's the leader of, of the nation of B'nai Israel who speaks Pelopab mouth to mouth to the Rabbonishlam, to God, and he's most humble. Chazal make the comparison, the sages make the comparison. You take a person with most, most difficulties, somebody who's suffering from all kinds of uh, skin diseases uh, that makes, makes him so humble and feels so badly. Moshe was lower than that in his feeling. Because remember, Moshe said, Mani, what am I? You know, Abraham Avinu said, uh, he was also very humble. And he said, on the offer of Afer, I'm dust and ashes. But dust and ashes are also something. They have substance. But when Moshe says, Ma'ani, what am I? It's no substance. Only humility. This was the unique quality of Moshe. He was more humble than any person in the world. And the Torah wrote specifically about Moshe Rabbeinu, this quality. Because this quality of humility encompasses everything else. When you can overcome your ego, the aspect of, of nothingness. Kalamidos haros, you're able to uproot from your midst all of the negative qualities. And when you have made room uh, by getting rid of those negative qualities, you're now meriting all of the, the good qualities. And this is, explains further on the words of the Holy Zohar. Uh, the Korach Pligia al Shema the Kaddish Baruch Not only was Korach fighting against Shalom, against peace, he was also having a fight against the name of God. The man the Polig al Shalom, Polig al Shema Kiddushu, the Ikre Shalom, because whoever fights against peace is really fighting against God, who was called Shalom. One of the names of God is Shalom, peace. The narcissism is a barrier separating a person, separating a Jew from God. Only through nullification of the ego can you come to have, get close to, to God. From Yuchad Pagam Hagavos, this, this defect of pride, Shu Ha'anaf Ha'ikori Yemidas Ha'ishus. This is the, this is the principal branch or, or, or leave of the, the, the aspect of, uh, of egotism. Kedisim Chazal, the sages say, that God says about somebody who is full of pride, egotistical, only thinking about themselves, 
says, Ain ani vahu yacholim ladur. We can't live together. I can't live with a person who's just full of pride. Kibachol amidos haraz, lo matzin bitoi kochomer. With all of the, the negative qualities that you see throughout the Torah, reference in the Torah and the Vim, everywhere, nowhere is it said, is there such a harsh thing said that God cannot live with you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That Hashem says, I can't be together with him. But Korach, Korach, who fell because of his his ego and his pride, so because of that, he was separated and he was fighting against the name of God, against God himself, whose name is Shalom. He continues. The Sora Kodesh says, in addition, not only when you're fighting, are you fighting against peace and against God, against the name of God, you're also fighting against Shabbos. Because Shabbos is perfection above and below. Shabbos is the day of the Jew to become close, closer to God. You cannot go into Shabbos with this feeling of, of narcissism that it's all about you. The main way to serve God on Shabbos is by nullifying your ego. Kamamar Abal Shemtov, of course, the Holy Bal Shemtov said, Ahad Omer Chazal, the sages say, Meis Be'er of Shabbos, Simon Yafalo. If somebody dies, Be'er of Shabbos, before Shabbos, it's a good sign. What does that mean? Hainu, Kasher Baba Shabbos Kodesh, Bavate Lagamri Es Atzma B'chol Yishosu Kameis. It means, that doesn't refer to a physical dying, it means that you are nullifying all of your pride, all of your ego, and, and going into Shabbos as if you're, you're standing there with nothing, like a dead person. You have nothing, nothing, no baggage with you. You've nullified everything. That's what that means. This, going into Shabbos without any of that, that nasty baggage, Without the baggage of ego, that's the way to come into Shabbos. Vazora Kodesh Isha, Isha Vazora Kodesh says, Hafach Boshas. The word Shabbos is three letters Shin, Beit, Tov. You turn them around, you mix them up, it's Beit, Shin, Tov, which means Boshas, embarrassment. So Zora says, it, you should turn around this, change this embarrassment. Shabbos, Shabbos, and come into Shabbos. Because of this, if you're embarrassed about what you've done all week, and your heart is broken about how all long, all week long you haven't served God properly, who rate me call, you're empty of all, all mitzvahs. You ask, how can I go into Shabbos? That's the nullification of the ego completely. Then, then you go into Shabbos. Shabbos, the embarrassment, the brokenheartedness, they themselves, that embarrassment, the act of embarrassment of being brokenhearted about what you've done and not serving God properly, that itself opens up the gate, bring you into Shabbos. Korach was in this quality of, of 
egotism and pride. Ayumacholik al Shabbos. He was also fighting with Shabbos. The Havas Shlema Almei Matatai because Shabbos is complete, is perfect, and both above and below. Oni Ika Manda Amar Bazar. It's also said in the Zohar. Shkorach Palig al Hatora. That not only is Korach by his actions fighting against Shalom, fighting against the name of God, fighting against Shabbos, but he's also fighting against against the Torah. Should Darchea Darche Noam Bukhon the Sibo said Shalom. Because the ways of the Torah are pleasantness, and all the paths are paths of peace. The name of our book, the Devo Shalom, paths, paths of peace, of peace, of peace, Vinyanu. And the aspect of this, Komar Chazal, as Chazal say, God spoke to Moshe in the desert of Sinai. Teaching of the Torah is given to somebody who makes himself or herself like a wilderness. Whoever doesn't bring themselves to that level of not needing anything, of dedicating everything to God, you own nothing. Hefker, cannot receive the Torah. In order to receive Torah, in order to receive the Torah, you have to nullify completely your egotistical feelings. And everything that you have, all the materiality that's, that's attaching onto you, you have to feel like a midbar, you know, like you're a desert, a wilderness. Homer Chazal, as the sages say, Divrei Torah doesn't last, words of Torah doesn't last except for somebody who figuratively is, is dying for it. The parish, maybe it's atzmo, I know she may be at at simoso vishoso, meaning that you're figuratively killing yourself, you're killing your your improper desires and your ego. Zeu ma'ash poli korach ala Torah dikreishon. This is how Korach was fighting against the Torah as well, which is called Shalom. So Achaz b'midas ha'yishus, he held on to this this. This quality of uh, of yishus of uh, ego, shu hefech bechinas ein, the opposite of humility. Uvitu a yishus a nidrash the the kinyan Torah, and you have to nullify this ego in order to receive the Torah. Vezehu shoresh machlokoso. This is the 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 heart. Of his fight, Al Shema the Kodesh Baruch Hu, on the name of Shabbos, on the name of on the name of Hashem, Al Shabbos, the name of on Shabbos itself, Al Torah on the Torah itself. He told Shachas Vidas Hayishus, Shehi Benigu Yisodo Seilu, because he held on to ego, which is the exact opposite of all of these qualities that are necessary. That's what it means he was lost from the congregation. So the Quran Surah Bir. Yeah, this you have to understand this. Madua not Nanashu Adas Korach Onesh Khamur Kokach. Why is the congregation of Korach punished with such a severe punishment? They're, they're lost completely. From the congregation of Israel. Shlomo Tsinu Kazos Meshub Chait Onesh Ko Chomer Al Shalovdo. We don't find any sin in the Torah that, that makes a punishment so strict as being totally lost from your people. Ella Shemarumaz Bazaar, 
but it's hinted at. Come on, the number of a sefer base Abraham. The sefer base Abraham says, "Ala pasuk uvo ha ovdim ba aretz ashur vani dochem aretz misrayim." Those that are lost will come from Eretz Ashur, and those that are pushed away will come from the land of Egypt. The Ovdim Eretz Ashur, Hainu Pagam Hagayus. Those that are lost in the land of Ashur, that refers to the, uh, to the, to the prideful person. Ashur Biloshan Chosek Kifus. Ashur comes from the language of being strong and holding on to this quality of pride. You're totally encompassed, holding on to yourself in the aspect of total narcissism. Those that are pushed aside from Mitzrayim, those who are so involved in the, the desires and the immorality, depravity of, of Egypt. Shenikra nidach Hashem sheholech midechi al dechi, because they're, they're called nidach, pushed away, because they're going away from from one loss to another. But they're not totally lost; they're pushed away. But then Hashem brings them back. Masha'en kain hagavot, unlike pride, who amida hagarua biyoter. That is the worst quality. But those that fall into it, they uh, they are are lost. Somebody who's tied, who's engulfed in his desires, improper desires, even though he's pushed away. He's going to suffer some losses. He will recognize the, 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 the state that he's in. He will sigh from his midst. As Hanachamiki, the true sigh, before God. We saw that with the, with the Jews in Egypt, they, they, they were so enslaved they couldn't even cry out but they 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 groaned and god heard their groans and this is what it's talking about god hears the groans of these people there's hope as long as you can groan sigh out to god there's hope and you won't be lost not like those who were lost in the land of ashur they were so, so strong in their feelings of, of pride. Uh, they had no broken heart on their condition. And they're lost. How do you get out of such a thing where you don't even feel how low you have sunk in? And therefore it's written on the congregation of Korach. They are lost. They are lost from the congregation of the Jewish people. Somebody who has an improper desire, who has, who is God, who's overly proud is in the aspect of somebody who's lost. This is what is written. Moshe heard and fell on his face. When Moshe saw that the, the shell of uh, egotism was so strong, the, the root of all evil, the chalamido saros of all the bad things, all the bad qualities. Bachain, therefore, of Yipol Al-Panav, he fell on his face. This is uh, an aspect of submission. Ki hachna hi hamida, the shenege midas haishus. The action of submission uh, 
which is a part of, of uh, humility, is the anecdote uh, against issues, against pride. Today, at least, it's, it's said that one of the ways to acquire Eretz Yisrael is with hachna, submitting to, to what Hashem wants in Eretz Yisrael. In order to overcome this, this shell of narcissism that was waking up in Bnei Yisrael, the children of Israel, it was necessary to submit yourself through this, you're able to, to break the power of that, of that shell. Shoresh. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. Shoresh. Shalahem. You break this, this, the, the shell, power of this shell over you. And the Torah teaches us in this part, if because of this quality, uh, this bad quality of narcissism, of egotism, you're lost completely from B'nai Yisrael, then the, the, a good a good quality, uh, a good quality is Jaidebitu Hayishus, Nitu La Giel Madregos Hagboa Pioter. Through the, the, the quality of humility, by, by nullifying your, your, your ego, you're able to reach the highest, highest level. Just like the ego brings you to the lowest level. Humility brings you the highest level. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of strange. You look at the, the thought, ego makes you high, makes you feel high, really sinks you down low. Humility makes you think you're low, but it really brings you high. Even if you're not worthy in other things, if you are working to get rid of your ego. Uh, with that power of ridding yourself of that ego, you're able to reach higher and higher levels. So Korach's, Korach's problem was that it wasn't, it wasn't that he felt that he should be equal to Moses. Moshe didn't do anything to him, but he felt he, Moshe was in his way. He felt that he should be selected instead of Moshe. Instead of the other tribes of the Levium, his tribe should have been selected. Uh, it was that ego that was the cause of his fall. And the message for us is that we sometimes think that everything we have is due to our efforts. And we have to recognize that it's not due, our, due to our efforts at all. Whatever efforts we have are given to us by God as a gift. And we have to not be in the position of saying, Kohi Vyasmi, my power, my strength did this. No, it's God's power, God's strength. That, that's everything that happened to you, happens to you. So, thank you for listening. I'm going to turn the uh, the uh, it off. It's beautiful. Well, yes, any, I'll take, I'll take before you. I before I turn the recording off. Any questions before I turn it off or comments? Okay, I'm going to turn it off.